Okay, so in part A, they're asking us to work out the length of the sloping edge. Okay, so when it comes to pyramids, to work out lengths and things, often what's useful is to use Pythagoras' theorem, okay, because you can make lots of right angle triangles, and sometimes you've got to make more than one, okay, so you've got to sort of work out one side using Pythagoras and then use that to work out another using Pythagoras, okay, so it's sort of like a multi step process. But um, when we look at perhaps um, what we need to do to get the answer, okay, because that's the sort of key, isn't it? You know, what, what do I need to unlock here to sort of um, find my final answer? If you, if you look here, if you could see sort of a pyramid and looking at it sort of sideways on here, okay, there is actually a right angle triangle, okay, whereby the missing side here is, is the centre of the base connected to the corner here. So if I do that, okay, Hopefully you can see that I've got like an upright, perfectly sort of vertical, right angle triangle, okay, whereby that side there is, is the vertical height, yeah, which is to, to the apex, which is eight centimeters, okay, and then the hypotenuse, the longest side of that triangle is the sloping edge, and of course then, this side here, which I just added in, if you think about it, is like half of the diagonal, isn't it, okay? Half the diagonal. Now, what I can do is actually figure out a way of working this out to start with, okay? Because I can now create another triangle. So, if you look now on the base, okay, on the ground of the pyramid, okay, I could, okay, create a right angle triangle here, okay? And then you need to appreciate what sort of sides we've got with this. Now, of course, that side there, okay, is actually going to be seven. So I hope you can see that there's going to be seven because we've got the whole length of that side is 14. That takes us to that midway point. So I'm going to have seven there. But you'll also realize as well, that's also got to be seven because that takes us to the midway point okay, of that side. And this side, of course, is also 14. It's a square base. So that's going to be seven. So on the ground now, right, you've got this triangle on the ground. Essentially, what this is going to look like, if I draw it here so it's a bit clearer, triangle we've got on the ground on the base okay has a side of seven here a side of seven here so we can use Pythagoras then to work out what this is so we get then the sort of half of that diagonal all the way across so with Pythagoras theorem of course don't forget a squared plus b squared is c squared and c of course is the longest side isn't it so I'll have seven squared plus seven squared is c squared so we know 7 squared is 49, okay, and we get then, well, 49 and 49 is 98. So then to get C, of course, then you've got a square root. So we get um, a square root of 98. So that's how long this side is here, okay. Now, it does say in the end to give our answer in this form, so we've got to simplify a third, but don't do any simplifying yet, right? That's for our answer. This is for our final answer. We haven't got to that stage yet, and we? we've just worked out this side, which is sort of half the diagonal. We haven't got to that yet, okay? So don't worry about this, this bit here until the very end. So I'm gonna put here then how long that side is, 98, or square root of 98, rather, okay? Um, and we've got now, if you could see with my vertical triangle, that side, square root of 98, this side, 8, okay? So I can, if you want, I can draw it by the side just so it's a little bit clearer. Okay, so we could see our, how our vertical um, triangle, square root of 98, 8 this side, okay? So then I can use Pythagoras theorem again to now work out this longer side, which we call C again, yeah? Um, which of course will be my sloping edge, okay? So what I need to do then, of course, with Pythagoras theorem, I need to square both of these sides. Now, if you think about it, if I square this, square the square root of 98, I'm just back to 98, aren't I? If you think about it, if you square the square root here, you get back to the actual number. Square eight, okay? Um, so we'll work that out in a minute, and then that will give me then c squared. So of course 98 
add then 8 squared is 64. Put them together, I get 162. Okay, so c squared is 162. To get c there, it's going to be the square root 162. Now we've got most of the marks. To get the final mark, we've got to look at getting it in that form. Okay, a b a square root b where b is a prime number. Now, if you take that answer there, okay, we can simplify. Okay, we can simplify a third. In order to simplify a third, we just need to find a pair of numbers that multiply to give 162. Okay, and ideally one of them is going to be square. Now, if you think about it, think about 2. 2 goes into 162. Okay, so what would that give us? Just think, th think through the process. Well, 2 times 81. Yeah, it'll give me 162. And 81 is actually a square, square number. So what I can do then, using the rules of thirds, I can split up these thirds. Okay. And square root of 81 is 9. Okay. So I can square root that. I can't square root that because it's still a third, but I've got my answer in the form nine root two, where of course then the, the number in there, the value in there is a prime number. So there's my final answer.